Today, I'm talking about one of the most important tools in Pro Audio, the high pass filter. In this video, you'll learn how and when to use them. If you're new here, my name's Kyle. I've created Audio University to teach you the fundamental concepts of audio and how to apply them. If that sounds interesting, consider subscribing. A high pass filter is an equalization tool that removes all frequencies below a set point. In other words, a high pass filter allows high frequencies to pass while removing low frequencies. In audio, there are two main types of filters, high pass and low pass. These are often confused. You can just remember that high pass allow high frequencies to pass, low pass filters allow low frequencies to pass. This is a frequency response graph of pink noise. Every octave is evenly represented, and that forms a straight line from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. This is the same pink noise processed through a high pass filter set to 500 hertz. The frequencies above 500 hertz are unaltered, but the frequencies below 500 hertz have been attenuated or reduced. Listen to the difference between these two signals. Generally speaking, you use a high pass filter to remove unneeded frequencies. Every instrument operates within a specific band of frequencies, and using a high pass filter you can remove the frequencies below that band. For example, the male speaking voice operates from about 80 hertz and up, and so I can use a high pass filter to remove the frequencies below 80 hertz. Here's an example of my voice without a high pass filter, and here's an example of my voice with a high pass filter. It just cleans it up a little bit. You can always adjust it later, but this is a great starting point. Traffic, wind, air conditioning, fans, they all create noise in our audio signal. Luckily, these noises are mostly composed of low frequency energy, which means that we can use a high pass filter to remove them. P pops or plosives are awful. It's always best to avoid them by separating yourself from the microphone or by using a pop filter between your mouth and the microphone. However, sometimes that's not possible. When P pops are inevitable, you can use a high pass filter to mitigate their effect. Here's a P-pop without a high-pass filter compared to a P-pop with a high-pass filter. It's not perfect, which is why you should always try to avoid plosives from the beginning. But when that's not an option, high-pass filters can help. Handling noise is also inevitable sometimes. Here's the sound of handling noise without a high-pass compared to handling noise with a high-pass. A big difference. Anytime you run a microphone through a speaker in the same room, there's a chance for feedback. Low frequencies are less directional than high frequencies. So if you put a speaker faced away from the microphone, the first frequencies that will feed back are low frequencies. High pass filters can make sure that you get maximum gain before that feedback occurs. Aside from removing noise and unnecessary frequencies, high pass filters can also be used to improve the tone of your mix. Let's say you have a bass guitar and a kick drum fighting for the same frequency band. You can high pass one of them to make room for the other. Just because an instrument can make a sound doesn't mean that that sound should be in your final mix. Lastly, high pass filters are used in speaker systems to separate the lows and the highs. If you send low frequencies to a high frequency tweeter, you could damage the driver. We use crossovers that use low pass filters to send only low information to the woofer and high pass filters to send only high information to the tweeter. High pass filters have two main controls, cutoff frequency and slope. Let's take a look here. The cutoff frequency sets where the filter begins. The slope determines the rate of the filter. It's measured in decibels per octave, and it allows you to set a steep filter or a gradual filter. Imagine a high pass filter with the cutoff frequency set to 400 hertz and a slope of 12 dB per octave. Let's say 400 hertz, the cutoff frequency, is 0 dB. That means that one octave below, 200 hertz, would be minus 12 dB. Two octaves below the cutoff, 100 hertz, would be minus 24 dB, and so on. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, click the like button and consider subscribing to Audio University. Check out the website at audiouniversityonline.com. Thanks for watching.